What is going on guys, Dan Lex here back with another video and in today's video I'm going to be changing out my cluster, specifically the gauge cluster in my car or in the Celica I should say because if you haven't seen in the last video the cluster it has, it's not bad, it's just that one of the portions of it don't light up and that's the LCD screen of the cluster itself. It's pretty important because I need to monitor the gas levels and stuff like that, coolant temps and yeah, I, just, I need that just to make sure everything is okay with the car. And I actually took the cluster apart to see if I could fix it, but ah, I just thought it would be better just to buy uh, another one. So that's what I did. I went to the junkyard and I ended up picking up a gauge cluster as well as door handle for the passenger side because on the passenger side it is just like a zip tie holding it open and that doesn't really look very nice I wouldn't I personally don't want that so I'm gonna be changing that out since I got it so as you see this is the door handle the zip tie last owner really made it work with this just pull on zip tie and it opens the door but I'd rather have a regular handle so there's that and just finished airing off this because it's a little dirty from the junkyard picked up this and everything looks fine when I opened it up that's the part that doesn't light up that's the LCD screen that I need to light up so we're going to put that in hopefully hopefully everything works out just fine so looking inside here I kind of already took apart the cluster and everything this is the broken one the LCD screen you can see how it looks on the edges because it's, it's it's basically broken so that's why I ended up getting another one so I'm replacing this old one with that new one and hopefully all is well Obviously the mileage is going to be off because this is from another car. So to read the mileage from the from that car, I don't even know how many miles it had. But hopefully it's not too bad because this Celica that I have has 140,000 miles. So we'll see how much that one had and see what it says. All right, so like I said before, that cluster over there, that is the old one. I just have the new one in now just testing it out seeing everything works and all that stuff so let's go in the car so I can show you guys uh, everything is working so we got the door the light on because both doors are open we get the key oh, I'll start to hear in the ignition we got the key and the main thing that needs to work is this LCD screen and there we go everything works I can see my gas my coolant and my mileage now this has 20,000 less miles than the original one for this car had but I'm not really complaining about it I just didn't want to say more miles than what I had on the car so I don't really think I'm gonna go through the process of trying to reprogram it because that doesn't really bother me um, this car should last me a long time, so mileage doesn't even really matter. So I'm gonna leave that alone and just keep it as it is. Got the whole thing bolted down, just like normal. Everything's back in. Uh, test it one more time, just to show you guys everything's working. Get my keys out. All right. So there we go. LCD screen now working which is great so now everything's good with the gauge cluster now I have to move on to fixing the door handles because the inside passenger and outside passenger door handles are broken and I got new door handles for them too the uh, inside and outside door handle for the passenger side I'm glad I found that it was another black um, Celica because I could just match this one Yeah, it's a black door handle and then this is the inside door handle with the piece not broken So we're gonna go ahead and put that on there as well and Yeah, that will basically almost be done completing this car 
for me to get it out on the road to where I personally like it. You don't have to do this if you're getting the car and you plan on fixing it up, but this is just what I like to do. I like to make it as dailyable as possible because you know I have my girlfriend. I don't want her having to struggle to open the door, um, getting in and out of the car, or me having to like always open the door for her to get out the car, stuff like that. So I'd rather replace these things now while I don't have to worry about it rather than replacing it when it's on the road and it's my daily car so I have to do all that stuff once I finished um, putting the door handles in probably gonna do an oil change I might not do the oil change in this video but I'll call it for the car and then I'll finally be able to take it out and probably get the catalytic converter cut out at, a, at an exhaust shop that way the car can breathe better and it'll officially be my daily. I, I can't wait, I've been waiting to get these little things done, stuff like that. I still gotta place the, the struts for the hatch, but that I can always replace another time. That doesn't really bother me too much. I don't think I'd be using the trunk too often anyways, but that's just something that I gotta keep in mind. I also gotta replace, but yeah. So let's get to these door handles to get it out. I'm using this wrong screwdriver. Now, let's so get the door cover off, get this whole thing off. There are some screws behind this circle and that circle. And there's also like two like down here along there that you have to take out. And then you can just kind of lift up on the door card and just remove it. But you gotta pry these out first. So I'm just using the flathead to get these out. One and let's see if I can get this one out with one hand. Come on, come on. There we go. There we go. So, yeah, you use a uh, Phillips head screwdriver and screw one, two. And I think there's two more down here to take off, and then you should just be able to like lift off the entire. Um, inside of this door, I don't even know what these are called, but this interior door piece, I should be able to just lift it up and then I can start working on that door handle and the outside door handle. Almost almost forgot to mention, there's also a bolt in here. Just gotta move like a little plastic cover. Mine's over there. It's a little plastic cover right here by where the door handle should be. And also remove this little, there's like a little triangle piece right here, which is this little triangular piece you just kind of pry that off with a screwdriver as well and you get that other plastic piece and you get that last bolt in the middle out and as well as a bolt right in here don't forget that to, to get that one as well there's also that one right there so we can see here we got the old one out it's broken this thing doesn't even wasn't even hooked up this part wasn't even hooked up but got that out, put the new one in already. It's just this one bolt right here. That you gotta take out and then just kind of move it off the little thing to hold it in place. And it just comes right out and it should just push right out. And then the opposite, you just take the new one, put it in, slide in place and bolt it right there. And all you gotta do is worry about um, putting the wires in the right spots to lock and open your door. Now, we're going to move on to the outside door handle, which I hate doing because there's a lot going on right here. Gotta move this plastic out the way and kind of shimmy while you wait through the door so I can get to it from the inside. I don't like doing door handles because the door is a big pain. There's not much room to work with, but I'll see what I can do. Try and get the outside door handle looking in the door through here Let's see if i can try and get a good angle for you guys all right so i got my foam light so looking in here i don't know if you guys can see that but there's a metal rod and on top of it there is like a little clip for the door handle you got to undo that or else the metal rod will just kind of stay on the door handle itself but also around it, there are 10 millimeter screws. There's, let me see if I can find them. I took them out, but 
I'll show you guys when I take the actual door handle out, but there are three 10 millimeter screws. There's two on the door handle and one that holds the key um, lock in place. And for the key lock one, is this hole right here, close to the outside of the door. If you look in there, there is a 10 millimeter right there. You take that out and then the door, like the part where your key goes to unlock the door, that should come out. And then once you get the metal rod and those, those three bolts off, you should be good to take it out. I'm not gonna lie, I started getting fed up with the car. I almost started like kind of breaking <laughs> the door handle. I'm gonna show you guys the door handle, how it looks when I get it out and also try to explain it better when I take it out because there's not much room for me to work with and to actually show you guys how to do it. So I'll show you as best I can once I get the door handle out. This is the side-by-side -side comparison of the two door handles. This one is the new one and that one is the old one. As you can see, I tried to get my screwdriver and kind of just pry it out and I ended up cracking it some and breaking it but eventually I got it out I just had to be a little more patient now as I was saying before take it out there are three 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter screws there's one right here that one's the easiest one to get there's one right here you don't have to use a 10 millimeter um wrench to get that one because the metal rod as I was saying before is kind of blocking that so you can't really get a ratchet there and then for this one you're gonna need a 10 millimeter as well but you need a ratchet with an extension to reach that one through the hole in the door so after you get those three out we should remove this last one up here by the door lock the door lock should come out the hole right here and this little piece right here it's usually like this down on the metal rod to hold it in place but you kind of you pry it up off the rod and push it up out the way so the rod can move and then you pull the rod back so that it gets out of that hole right there and that way it frees the rod and allows you to take out this whole assembly so now the only thing I need to put on this one to that one the only thing I need to put is take this off put this here in its place because I don't have a little plastic piece here so I'm gonna take that off and put it on there and we should be good. I ended up getting everything done. Uh, I did it off camera just to get it done with because it was a hassle to do. Um, basically all the steps that you, I told you to take out the, um, the door handle, you just do it in reverse and you should be able to get it back in. And then, yeah, got the door card on door panel I don't know why I keep calling it that door panel on just tested everything out I'm gonna sit in the car close the door and there we go so the inside handle works and now let's try the outside yep outside handle works as well only thing is that this handle is an aftermarket handle. I can tell because of the way it was, the way it's structured uh, compared to the OEM one that I had or the broken one that I have. Um, you can see it doesn't sit exactly flush. A little gap here, and um, yeah, when I was putting the little yellow clip on there, it was really different. The holes are a different size and everything, but still fit. And also I can hear like a little clicking when I lift on the handle. So there's that. It doesn't really bother me. Just I'm glad that now the door handle works on the inside and the outside. So that's really all that matters to me. So yeah guys, that's gonna end it for this video. Hope you guys liked what you watched. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more content. I try to post every Sunday, maybe more, maybe a little later, but I try to keep it as close to consecutively posting every Sunday. And if anything, you can keep up to date with me on my Instagram at Dan underscore Lex. I'll put it right there in the corner. So make sure you guys follow me there. I make sure to post there. If I don't post on certain days, I'll let you guys know what's happening. I'll also keep up with updates because I always post on my story when I'm doing work on any cars or any car things that come up. So make sure you guys go follow me on my Instagram. And that's going to end it for this video, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. I'm out.